This is the Ducati Multistrada 1200S Touring. By all rights, this Italian adventure bike should not exist. I mean, imagine if Ferrari made a four-wheel drive. It'd probably look something like this. The Multistrada is Ducati's attempt to cash in on the growing adventure bike segment, which more or less kicked off when Obi-Wan Kenobi took an annoying friend and two BMWs around the world back in 2004. It's easy to forget that Obi-Wan had the force backing him up. That is, the force of a couple of support trucks. But the rugged, windswept image of long-ranged off-road touring stuck in enough middle-aged minds to sell a lot of very pricey motorcycles. The Multistrada is a long way off being the prettiest bike Ducati has ever made. But it could be a lot worse. And hey, you don't have to look at the mantelpiece to stoke the fire, right? Let's get right down to business. That fire is one of the great engines of our time. A 1200cc Ducati Testa Stretta L-Twin, plucked from its gorgeous home in the 1198 Superbike, and gently massaged into a more flexible unit. That engine is controlled through one of the geekiest computer systems ever fitted to a motorbike. Like a lot of bikes, it offers several different riding modes, but these modes change a lot more than the engine character. We're talking fuel mapping, traction control settings, ABS, and even electronically adjustable suspension, all from the one button. The Multistrada has four modes, sports, touring, urban, and enduro. Urban mode gives you 100 horsepower, lots of traction control, and a comfort-focused suspension setup. 100 horsepower doesn't sound like much in this day and age, but 100 Ducati horses don't feel anything like 100 Suzuki horses. Even in this low-power mode, the Multistrada absolutely hammers. It's ask and ye shall receive at the throttle. If this bike had nothing but urban mode, it would be an absolute perler. It's a bit wide with the big bars, mirrors and panniers for serious city splitting work, but then on the other hand it's got one of the tightest turning circles of any bike I've ever ridden, making it just about the ultimate U-turn machine. No wonder we road testers like it, we spend about 60% of our day doing U-turns. Then there's Enduro mode, which softens off the suspension a bit more and keeps the throttle response fairly gentle, up to the same 100 horsepower peak. But it backs off the traction control so that you can gas it up and spin the rear up a bit more on gravel and dirt. For a bike that's almost entirely road focused, the Multistrada is a real pleasure to take into the bush. At least if you can get over your morbid fear of scratching the pretty red paint. It's pretty comfy to ride standing up. It feels quite light and nimble, at least for a frickin' 1200. And the front and rear brakes can pull you up surprisingly quickly on dirt if you trust the ABS system enough to go the big grab. Touring mode is next up, again featuring a comfort focused suspension setup and lots of traction control. This time though, you've got access to the full 150 horsepower, albeit through a rather gentle throttle map, so you can be a bit clumsy with the throttle without losing the misses off the back. It's worth mentioning at this point that all four riding modes can be adjusted for different load levels. Rider only, rider with luggage, rider and passenger, rider passenger and luggage. Unfortunately, there's no setting for badly behaved passengers. Shit. The Multistrada is a superb bike for two-up riding. Both rider and pillion enjoy a very comfortable and smooth ride and this may be the most generous pillion seat we've ever seen on a Ducati. Plus, sixth gear at 110 k's an hour gives a pleasant vibration effect that might be a little too pillion friendly. Uh, heated grips, now there's a welcome addition on any touring bike. Although, you should be aware that your waterproof gloves might not be steam proof if you crank up the heat when it's raining. And now, the main event. Sports mode. <laughs> Good grief, 
150 horsepower with a hair trigger throttle mapping feels nothing short of manic. The way this thing builds speed is just crazy, especially through the mid-range and when the revs pick up. Careful on the throttle though, it's such an aggressive mapping that you can surprise yourself with a big fart and find yourself on the back wheel. It's a truly excessive mountain of grunt that craps on anything else in its class and seems totally out of whack with the bike's rather sensible looks. If you've never ridden a bike with oil and suspension before, you haven't tried the best in the business. It's not a radical change in feel from cheaper suspension, it's just that everything is noticeably smoother and more controlled. Bigger lean angles feel safer, bumps and dips feel like less of an issue. You can still feel the surface of the road, you're just feeling it through a velvet glove. And uh, fellas, if you've never tried feeling it through a velvet glove, you're missing out. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Ducati makes the best dashes in the business. It's perfectly natural and easy to read, which is astonishing given how much information it shows. The level of customization on this bike is frankly preposterous. You can totally customize each of the riding modes right down to how much compression damping you want on each fork. You can turn the ABS off if that's how you roll. You can use the dash as a lap timer. Or you can just leave the thing more or less alone and enjoy things like seeing your projected fuel range going from 400 k's on the freeway to 200 when you're riding like an idiot. Oh, and the gear shift indicator is really handy. With a motor like this one and gearing like the Multistrada has, you'll tend to catch yourself cruising on the freeway in third or fourth a fair bit. Their dashes may be great, but the mirrors on Ducati sports bikes are often pure compliance items, good for nothing but elbow gazing. Not on this bike though, these are some of the best motorcycle mirrors I've ever used. They're better than most car mirrors, I want to buy half a dozen and stick them on all my bikes. Ignition is fun on the Multistrada as well. It's keyless, or more to the point, you can keep the key in your pocket when you start the thing. The key itself is one of those fancy ones that does this. Which I've always thought was a bit wanky, but then it did come in handy one night when I parked it out the dodgy side of town. about complaints? We wouldn't be doing our job as reviewers if we didn't find a few things to whinge about. So here goes. If this is a sports bike, then why do bits of centre stand get in the way when I try to put my toes up on the pegs? If this is a tourer, then why doesn't it have cruise control? It's not even an option. And for reference, there's an option to buy a fancy electronic fuel cap that opens itself if you're too lazy to fish the key out of your pocket. I mean look, the fueling is completely computer controlled, you've got all the sensors you need, cruise control is two buttons and a hundred lines of code guys, it's the nicest thing you can add to a touring bike, and your older richer target market will love you for it, make it happen. The panniers are nicely sealed and waterproof, and they attach and detach pretty easily, that is until you take the bike out in wet or muddy conditions, where bits of grime work their way into the mechanism and things get a bit stuck. But let's face it, we're talking about Ducati owners here, wet and muddy ain't gonna happen, is it? The other annoying thing about the panniers is that they're a little too nice for this nasty world. Be very careful when you put them down, they're way too easy to scratch. The gearbox gave us the odd false neutral, and we weren't being gentle with it. That's weird, because the gearbox is straight out of the 1198, and we never had any dramas with that one. It also feels a bit clunky and hard to find gears sometimes, Oh, and this poxy little screen actually manages to be worse than useless. It's adjustable on the go, but all it does is let you choose which part of your helmet you want your concentrated wind blast aimed at. You get the age-old honeymooner's choice. Do you want it in your mouth or in your eye? Every lid's a noisy lid with this thing. Chuck it in the bin and never look back. At the end of the day, Ducati wants to sell the Multistrada as four bikes in one because of the mode switch and all the technology behind it. But, as cool as the modes are, at the end of the day, the Multistrada just feels like one cohesive bike that can just about do it all. It's a kick-ass all-rounder. This thing has excelled in just about every situation we've put it in, from commuting to touring, to two-up, light off-road work, to sports bike hunting in the twisties. It's comfortable, it's got top-of-the-line safety systems, or uh, go-faster systems, depending on your perspective. It handles beautifully, it looks pretty in an ugly kind of way, 
and it goes like 10 different kinds of buggery. A five minute test ride will be enough to sell loads of these things, they're really special. Unfortunately, it costs an arm and a leg, so we'll leave you with this warning. Don't take a Multistrata out for a test ride if you're not cashed up, because the ale houses are littered with pathetic souls like us who've tasted the glory but don't have the means to own one.